Hello, friends and family. How are you guys? How is your Monday and your end of the month? Yeah, it's always kind of hectic at the end of the month, right? We think, okay, the ending should be a lot easier than the beginning, but um, it becomes difficult. You've got bills, you've got time going on and we tend to realize how much time has passed at the end of the month um there's just a lot that happens uh and uh, so there is i think this like overwhelming feeling that happens um so hi I'm wanting to share the devotion with you guys today. This is, I believe, I'm on a four-day four, four day strike here. <laughs> um, and it's really, it's not about, like, me coming here and, and just doing this for myself. So um, know that this is my accountability to share with you guys the Word of God, and I love to do this. I love it because I'm staying consistent and although I'm staying consistent on my end of doing my devotions, I think that it's awesome. I can I can share this with you guys. So please let me know how you're doing, where you're coming from, and um, if you have things that you're going with, just know that I'm always I'm always here if you want to talk. Um, Ashton, honey, thank you. Uh, so. We are going to go in with the word today, and again, it's so on point, and I think that's that's another reason why I love doing this and being consistent with you guys, because I feel that there is a reality to the truth um, of, of God talking and, and just being so um, on point with my journey, and I think that's just a testimony in itself on how amazing our Father truly is. So, we go in today to the Word, and the devotion says, Hope is a golden cord connecting you to heaven. This cord helps you hold your head up high even when multiple trials are buffing you. I never... Leave your side, and I never let go of your hand. But without the cord of hope, your head may slump and your feet may shuffle as your journey uphill with me. Hope lifts your perspective from your weary feet to the glorious view you can see from the high road. You are reminded that the road we're traveling together is ultimately a highway to heaven. When you consider this radiant destination, the roughness or smoothness of the road ahead becomes much less uh, significant. I am tra um, training you to hold in your heart a dull focus, my continual presence and the hope of heaven. And there are some verses that I am going to share with you guys. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, so, if you guys have your Bibles or Bible app, um, Romans 12.12, 12, which I already have open, and I'm going to go straight to it, and it says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continually steadfastly in prayer. And you guys, I have been fighting that anxiety feeling or that anxiousness um, simply because time is passing and I feel like we really don't have too much time here. Like time is already fast in itself and I don't know if you guys have talked to anyone that is older or an elder or just um, even mature Christian, uh, 
I have heard in my experience that everyone says time is going even faster, like the fastest it's ever been. And it just makes you truly take a step back and look at everything and, you know, to look at it all, it, it can make you feel anxious. It can make you feel stressed um, and eager um, and anxious. So that is something that I'm trying to um, be steady, you know, just be still and, and not have those um, feelings and just be filled with the fruit of the Spirit um, and truly understand what the fruit of the Spirit is. So, um, here we go again. There's another verse. We're going to go to 1, the, um, I can't even say it, and I just looked it up. Uh, let's see here. 1, Thelonians, 5, 8. Please give me grace. I'm just learning all of this stuff. And that's why I'm diving in more. So, here we go to 5, 8. And it says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So as you see, there is a lot of um, hope here. That's that's what today is focused on, is our hope. Um, and as you go more into this, it really does kind of go into the last days and how um, God is going to come and it's going to be a thief, of, a thief of a night to take up the Christian people. And it's interesting because it says, For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. And, um, and that is uh, the verse right before it says, um, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, etc. Um so it, it just really makes you want to be disciplined um, in the spirit because sadly I've, I've watched a lot of people and I've done this myself, but I'm, I'm watching a lot of people party these days and just become more in those sinful ways. Um, and it's kind of heartbreaking and scary when you think about God saying he's going to come through the night and to be sober. So, we have more keys. He's coming, yeah, and the thief of the night. So, makes me, um, I used to try and like uh, just sleep, you know, sleep is such a big thing and it is something that's important to our health. Uh, especially if you're a parent, you're just like, sleep, I don't even know what sleep is anymore. But I have, in a way, um, have had this issue that I never can really sleep during the night. Like, I always felt like I was halfway awake, or that I was constantly talking, or and I just couldn't quiet my mind. So I started taking different medications, I tried different things to let me sleep. But then I realized that I was really muffling myself and uh, my spirit was so sluggish that I could, I could not hear uh, and I could not see anything. So I feel uh, now that I am more open to not being able to sleep. I'm more open to the fact that God can speak to me in my dreams. So even if I'm having a nightmare... Yeah, we don't want to have these dreams. We don't want to have these thoughts or these feelings. But that's something God allows us to feel and experience because there's something that needs to be heard or seen. There needs to be something that is um, so shocking to the flesh that your spirit is awakened to it. 
So I just take it. I take it and I embrace whatever God has for me because, you know, a lot of the times now in this new age that I'm discovering, there's just this big rabbit hole I had no idea about. Um, but I have found where we just want the fuzzy goodness during these days, the, the entertainment, the, um, just the good stuff. We don't want to hear all the, the other stuff that doesn't feel right, that rubs us wrong, that is too hard to handle, um, to become that perfect Christian. And the truth is like, we have to, we have to feel those things. We have to be in a sense, uh, we have to recognize certain things. So, um, I just feel like God tries to speak to us and during these days we don't, we don't, we can't hear him because we're just so stuck in the culture and the, the way that society is, um, now. So, all right, we'll do one more verse and then we have another devotion. Um, so Hebrews 6, 18 through 19 or 6, uh, 6, 18 through 19, uh, and it says that by two immortable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong constellation who have fed the refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope will have a have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, in which enters the presence behind the veil. So again, hope, you know. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I have really been struggling with some of the, um, the things that I always heard when it comes to, like, praying for the sick or... Um, praying for healing, uh, praying for, praying for certain, certain things that I want or that I need or th that I think, um, that the Bible asks us to talk about. And for some reason, this past couple of days, it really brought the forefront of a lot of this has to do with our spirit. So it's not the sickness of our flesh, it's the sickness of our spirit. Um, it is not the healing of the flesh, it is the healing of the spirit. It really does lie so much more deeper than the flesh itself. So there's things that we're going to have to encounter because God does allow things to happen. And we can't, um, you know, rebuke all the the bad things because there really is so much good that comes out of those broken, bad situations in our lives. I actually have found more um, and have been a, a more aware of God and what he's doing in my life in those moments of my, my darkest moments. Um, so, and, and I like the analogy of thinking, uh, you know, you, you can't see the darkness without light. Like you can't see light without darkness. Like however that goes, can't see, oh, man, I wish I, I went blank, but do you know what I'm talking about? Like when you have darkness and you have that one little star, you can see so much more. You can see that star so much more brightly in the dark, right? Does that make sense? Um, hopefully you guys get this and please give me grace because I'm not a pastor. I'm not anybody like significant out there. I'm just trying to share my testimony and what I've been going through um, to hopefully help you guys. And I'm, I'm looking to become more mature in these things so that I'm not leading anybody astray, even myself. So this is a working progress here. Um, okay, so last devotion, and there is a verse that comes with it. Uh, it says, Refuge. And it says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. And that's Naoma, Naom, 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 one, seven. So give me grace. 
Okay, did you know that deep inside a mountain on the island of Spitsbergen in Norway, there is a seed vault that is meant to withstand just about any natural disaster? Hold on. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that, and I actually looked it up, and there is a place in Norway that holds all these seeds. And it says, it was built as a place to steadily or safely keep seeds from all over the world so that they could be used to um, repopulate the plant life if the earth in, in the earth in case in case of an ex extinction level event. It is basically a seed stronghold for times in trouble. And it says, imagine if a disaster was approaching. Where would Hi. where would be the safest place for you to hide? What stronghold safest would you run? You to hide. Hold on. What stronghold would you run yeah. to for safety? This verse tells us that the Lord is our safe place. He is the stronghold where we can run when trouble comes. And there's a quick prayer, and it says, Heavenly Father, you are my safe place. Thank you for being my stronghold for times and trouble. So, that is today, you guys. Um, and I just hope that this gives you something to work on yourself with. Because I feel like we have kind of took away the importance of, like, being your yourself's critic and you know wanting to change ourselves and really truly get to like the nitty gritty of being the best Christian we can be in that relationship with God and walking in faith and not allowing these circumstances and the fleshly fleshly desires to overcome us. So, hi. Um, so hopefully this helps because I have really put to the forefront that I want to be sober minded. I want to be aware of God. I want to not be fearful if I need to be still and just wait for the next step that God wants me to take. Um, and I want to be that, that person that can do the most craziest out, out, um, the unthinkable things because I know that I can trust that that is God and I have the discernment. Um, and still, he is so powerful in his words that he's been giving me, you guys. And I know that it is not just me. There is a uniqueness on how he speaks to each and every one of us because we are his children. And as us parents know, uh, your children can be completely different. One can come out and be super, super hyper or, you know, have the, these certain passions. And um, then you have this other one that's just the complete opposite. And you have to be able to teach them and love them in their ways. So to have the creator of the universe and the creator of all of us be able to be so, uh, so intimate with the relationship, it's, it, it's incredible. So I just pray that you are able to do that and, um, you know, really open that door, uh, and let Jesus into your heart. Um, and, well, I just hope that you guys know that you can talk to me, and I'm here. I'm a people person, missing people, and um, so I guess that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are just hopping on, hit that replay button. Let me know how you're doing, and I will talk to you guys soon. God bless and take care.